Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and today we're in Mark's Gospel again, uh, and we're in chapter uh, 10, and we're going to be reading verses 17 through 31. This is the encounter of Jesus with the rich young ruler, and of course you have to read all three synoptic Gospels to get all of those details. He's a, a rich young ruler. Uh, of the ruling class, young man, and a very wealthy young man. Of course, you get that in every story about his wealth because it's key to what happens. This says, this in the Synoptic Gospels is paired with, grouped with, I should say, um, the, um, the 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 blessing of the children and the conversation about divorce. Uh, so these three uh, form a triptych of sorts three linked stories uh, that are always uh, together. So let's go ahead and read uh, 17 through 31. <clears throat> and as he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and started asking him, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and your mother. And he said to him, Teacher, I've kept all these things from my youth up. And looking at him, Jesus felt love for him and said to him, One thing you lack, go, sell all your possessions, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me but as these but at these words his face fell and he went away grieved for he was one who owned much property and jesus looking around said to his disciples how hard it will be for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of god and the disciples were amazed at his words but jesus answered again and said to them children how hard it is to enter the kingdom of god it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were even more astonished, and they said to him, Then who can be saved? Looking upon them, Jesus said, With some men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Not with God, excuse me, for all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, Look, we left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or a mother or father or children or farms for my sake and for the Gospels, but he shall receive a hundred times as much now in the present age, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and farms, along with persecutions and in the world to come, eternal life. Jesus is sat his face to, towards Jerusalem, which in the coming uh, sessions together we're going to see. I mean, he's awfully close. He's going to be in Jericho by the end of the chapter, which is the last large town you come to before you get to Jerusalem. So this is close to the end of his ministry. And this young man runs up to him, runs up, kneels down at his feet, and is repeatedly saying, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And he calls him good teacher, uh, and Jesus says, why do you call me good? No one is good but God. There is, of course, an answer to that question. And the answer to that question is, well, you are God. Uh, but he doesn't give the young man time to ponder this. This is a seed planted for later thought. Um, he said, you know the commandments. And then Jesus uh, mentions the second half of the Ten Commandments. If you think back to the Ten Commandments, Exodus chapter 20, um, the, the, there are, there's the first half that deals with our relationship with God, and the second half that deals with our relationship with each other. And the second half are the sh thou shalt nots, you know, um, that, we, that we associate um, with the Ten Commandments uh, and make up really only half of the Ten Commandments. And so the rule keeping part, the part about playing nice, you know, uh, on the playground, that part. And Jesus mentions that part. And the young man quite earnestly and completely honestly says, I have kept those from my youth up. Well, he's still a youth. <laughs> but we get, you know, 
as long as I can remember, as long as I've had agency, I have kept these 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 rules. They've been that important to me. And Jesus, and we're given this detail only in Mark. Jesus immediately loves the young man. And so then he challenges him to keep the first half of the Ten Commandments. To love the Lord his God with all of his heart, soul, strength, and mind. He's got the loving your neighbor as yourself down. It's the other part. And remember what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. You cannot serve two masters. You can't serve God and money, possessions. And he says, okay, if you're serious about this, sell your possessions, give them to the poor, and come follow me. Just be, be part of the group that stays with me. And the young man will not do that. He goes away very sad because he's a wealthy young man. And so his head was in it, and his heart had good intentions, but his heart wasn't in it, not really. And he goes away sad. And it's just a teaching moment for Jesus. And he says to the crowd, it's going to be hard for a rich to get into heaven. It's hard to anybody to get into the kingdom of heaven, but it's hard for the rich. It's easier for the camel to go through the eye of the needle. And we try, so many commentators try to mitigate that and talk about some gate called the eye of the needle and how camels had to crawl through. And I don't know. Jesus' point is that it's very hard. And we know why from his other teaching. It's very hard because of the claims that possessions make on us and the lure of greed and the way it, it finds a way to occupy all of our efforts, all of our waking moments and, and having more never satisfies. It just means you want more beyond that. And so it's a never ending cycle that completely takes you away from discipleship. And, and Jesus means that, and he wants us to take that seriously, and we should listen, especially we Americans, we Westerners, we who are more um, provided for, we enjoy more luxury, really, than any people have ever in the history of the planet. And, and we should take this very seriously and not find a way to mitigate it or lessen it, find a way to make it less challenging than it is. And Peter points out, um, we've done what you've asked. We've left everything. And they did. They left the great catch of fish on the beach. They left their families back in Capernaum to follow Jesus for these three years. And, uh, and Jesus said, yes, and you'll receive your reward. On this side of the Jordan River, on this side of heaven, you're going to have homes everywhere and brothers everywhere and sisters everywhere and moms and dads everywhere because God's family is large. Um, and then you're also going to receive persecutions, but in the end you're going to receive eternal life. It's an important lesson that we don't need to um, just gloss over or domesticate in any way. It should call us, as Jesus intends for it to, to take a hard look at our own selves and where our hearts are. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be, Jesus tells us. Well, uh, we'll pick up with verse 32 next time. Thank you for joining me for another five, now nearly nine, Good Minutes with the Word.